Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Good morning, Dr. Lawrence Brown, and welcome, Loretta Borlo. Thank you so much for joining me in Dallas, Texas, on the Valder Beebe Show. Thank you. If you don't mind, Dr. Uh, Brown, I'll start with you, because uh, I had some information that many children with neurological conditions, such as epilepsy, cerebral palsy, or metabolic disorders, have special physical emotional needs as they get older. Tell us about making that transition from pediatric to adult health care. Absolutely. It's not just uh, those three disorders, but it's everything else from autism to uh, learning disability and attention deficit disorder and muscular dystrophy and all the other one out of six children in America. We put together a team. We uh, tried to develop the principles because we really have not wrapped our minds around this on how to best help the uh, children and their family to get there. And uh, thanks to the partnership with ASI Pharmaceuticals, we came up with some core principles that we'll, we can discuss. Okay. And before we get to those core principles, could I hear Loretta's story? Lori, would, would you add some information to the conversation? Uh, yes. My son, Daniel, was diagnosed as a young child with Lennox-Gastaut syndrome which is a <clears throat> severe epilepsy disorder. Um, he has a number of different kinds of seizures. <clears throat> when he was just a very young child, he was um, experiencing a lot of seizures on a regular basis and back to experience many life-threatening situations. We um, took him to a pediatric neurologist, and over his um, childhood years, we developed a very close relationship with that pediatric neurologist and learned to trust him very much for his care. So when it came time, <clears throat> time for Dan to um, transition into an adult neurologist, uh, we were very anxious about that. We didn't really want to leave the care of that pediatric neurologist. Plus, we didn't have any guidelines on how to go about choosing an adult neurologist, and we didn't have any, uh, anything in place like the statement that Dr. Brown is talking about, he and his colleagues putting together. Okay. Okay, thank you. We're going to leave it right there because I want to ask Dr. Brown because that sounds like a common condition. You know, I'm very attached to my doctor and I'm adult. I don't want to change doctors. And I think that's been a lot of the hoopla about the affordable health care. You know, people want their doctors and they want to stay with them. So she's having a problem that adults also have too. Well, that's probably true in many cases. But uh, the fact is that <clears throat> pediatric care is different than adult care. The model is different. And what we want to do is to help every child to move ahead and to take full responsibility and live with the best quality of life. So we are suggesting that families and their children start early. If the discussion hasn't begun by age 13, that they should talk to their pediatrician or neurologist, not that they have to leave at that point, but they have to talk about what it takes for their child to be fully independent as much as possible. And every year that needs to be rediscussed because things change. If you're 14, you're not yet driving. If you're 16, you're not yet drinking. If you're 17, you're not yet in college or in trade school. And so we need to prepare for these things. Kids need to learn how to have their uh, medications and what it, how important it is. 
And lastly, in the unfortunate case like uh, Loretta discussed, where uh, for physical or intellectual challenges, they may not be fully responsible. They should be as responsible as possible. And legal implications need to be put in place before they turn 21, before they lose all the advantages of special education, or it may not happen at all. I want my audience to know that Dr. Brown comes well qualified. He's a medical doctor, associate professor of neurology and pediatrics at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and the Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. Doctor, this is great advice that you're giving parents. How can, is, is, is there a team or a group or some, some organization to help them make this transition? Indeed, that was done through the uh, Child Neurology Foundation. Uh, but it was also endorsed by the American Academy of Pediatrics, the uh, American Academy of Neurology, and the Child Neurology Society. So we've all come together in order to uh, develop these core principles. And can they go on the web and find some information? Because it's kind of like scary for us. Like I'm telling you, we love our doctors. We fall in love with them. <laughs> Yes, there are several websites that are very helpful. The first one is advancingepilepsycare.com, and the second one is childneurologyfoundation.org. You guys have brought up something to light that we all need to think about. I really appreciate this. I want to thank you so very much, Dr. Uh, Brown and Loretta, for being a guest on the Valder Beebe Show. And thank you for sharing your story, Loretta. Thank you. Thank you, Valder.